gift of God. <clears throat> right. Uh, eight. I mean, uh, nine. Ten. Not of works, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. So, and there's nowhere in that scripture where it says that my good deeds outweigh my bad. It says by grace. Grace is unearned favor, unmerited favor. That means that there's nothing that I can do. All I do is, but if we begin to climb, then this is the one. See? Eight. But the word says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So all I have to do is call on God. You see, the misconception is that people say, okay, when, when it's altar time, they say, okay, if you, can, if you denounce God or don't confess God before men, he'll say he uh, won't uh, accept you before his father. I'm just paraphrasing. He said, if you denounce me before men, I will denounce you before my father. And so they use that scripture to pretty much convict a lot of people. And they come up, giving their life to God, and a little bit convicted because they say, okay, I've got to be seen before a lot of people. Well, it's not where, but, but in reality is, all I have to do is once I give my life to God, let somebody know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. And begin to witness to others at the same time. Witness through my lifestyle, witness through these different things. Then Martin Luther began to notice these things. And in the process of him knowing these things, he began to start nailing them on the wall. Mm -hmm. And since back in the day, this is what they did when they get, you know, when they, a lot of stuff was posted. And he would post it on the wall, and it, it, it enraged the captain. But then after that, so he wound up and then he wound up coming up with the Lutheran, the Lutheran church, or the Lutheran doctrine. And with this Lutheran doctrine, you notice how it, it has a little bit of Catholicism in it, the way it's set up, the way it, the way they do their songs, a lot of different things are that way. Until you start getting into the cultural versions of the Lutheran, the, the, the Caucasian, the African American, the uh, Hispanic versions you begin to see a little bit different, but they're all the same. But it was all in his interpretation to go and read the word, and the word began to speak to him, and he began to realize that all the stuff that he was taught wasn't true. You see, Paul stressed the important issue, or an important reason for us to study, but, but he did never say what to study. You see, we must... Uh, but to study, but I guess we were supposed to assume that he was saying the Bible. But if we use the Bible as a, but we should assume that it was the Bible. But now check this out. But if we use the Bible, if we use the Bible as our roadmap, let's go over to Psalms 119 and 5. Psalms 119 and 5. Because if we use God's word as a roadmap, we can begin to get clarity on which what, what to do. As we read last week in regards to how I said God's word will wait, he will what God's word will speak to you, God's word will lead you, God's word will will, 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 will will bring you into peace. God's word will transform your life. Now in Psalms 119 and 5 it says, The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light word? Psalms 119 and 5. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my what? Path. So God's word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. God's word is a light. Let's go over to Proverbs 6.23. And in Proverbs 6.23, it says, huh? Psalms 119, 105. Or 105. Yeah, 105. Oh, 105. Where you go, said, 5? Said 5. Oh, I'm sorry. 105. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Psalms 119, 105. No, I did that early this morning when I was looking. I'm like, oh, oh I, I don't it understand. Okay. It said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet okay. and a light unto my what? Okay. My path. Okay. Now, in Proverbs 6.23, it says, Proverbs 6.23. Someone uh, go over there real quick. Proverbs. Proverbs 6.23. Yes, whoever get that first, read that book. Proverbs 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, 
and the reproof of instruction are the ways of life. It says, for the commandment is a lamp. Lamp meaning in light, in sight, or wisdom. For the word, for the commandment is wisdom. And the law is light, meaning clarity, revelation, knowledge. So the law is what brings us revelation, knowledge, telling us what is actually really going on. It brings us a clarity, uh, brings us understanding to what God is saying to us. And reproof of instructions are the ways of life. So in the understanding that the commandments is a lamp and the law is light, it is what we use as a navigational device, a GPS, to keep us on the right path of what God has called us to be. It is the thing, the instrument that's used to keep us focused. It is the instrument that keeps us understanding that when all hell breaks loose in our lives, that sometimes I must go to my knee. When all hell breaks loose in my life, I must go to his word. What is God saying? in this time for my life. As I begin to go through all hell and high waters in my life, I must check and analyze what is really going on. See, because my interpretation of what's really going on, what I see to be going on, could be a lie to my understanding. My interpretation of things causes me to hold myself in bondage to, is it true or is it false? Is it lie or is it memorized? You remember that commercial? So my interpretation could cause me to miss the mark. My interpretation could cause me to miss out on my blessing. My interpretation could cause my blessing to be bound. My interpretation could cause me to be suffering from bound blessing disease. My interpretation. See, because when you begin to interpret anything, we must know the history behind it. See, because once you know the history behind it, then you'll know if it's true or not. Because if somebody comes to you, oh, he came and he knocked me out, he knocked my teeth out of my mouth. See, true enough, you don't have a tooth in your mouth. True enough, he hit you. But what caused it to happen? Not saying that it was justified, but before I start believing you and start to put my assumption and my theology together, and my thinking together, my because now that you told me this, I got these big pictures in my head of a big battle going on, and things that didn't even happen, I have it running through my head. You ever hear somebody tell you a story and then all of a sudden your anger or your emotions, all this stuff got caught up and you started to see the picture while you, you're going on, you're like, now you're getting upset and all these pictures being in your head. And, like, and then you find out that it wasn't nothing like what was your interpretation of it. They walked down the street, they tripped, they lost a tooth, got home, things weren't going their way, so they started snapping out on everybody. They slapped that person, the reaction was to go boom. They didn't hit the person, they pushed the person. But by them already lost their tooth and they bleed, they had to find somebody. They wouldn't join in on their uh, emotional parade. They wouldn't join in on their reindeer game. So then they went and found someone else to join in on their reindeer game. Join in on their, 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 their pain and their torture because when that, that, that old saying, misery likes company. Because when you go through, sometimes when some people go through, they want somebody to tag team and feel the misery too. And now you're feeling yucky and you're feeling tripped out and you're wondering why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Because that person, even though you didn't come to grieving with it, they brought it into your house. Now your house could either just be hearing it, or your house could be them just sitting at the table gossiping. And what happened with gossip is gossip brings a spirit. And the spirit, see everything... Even though we walk in the natural and we see things in the natural, there's things happening in the spiritual. That's why when things come so quick or things happen so-called overnight, we was like, oh God, what happened? It just happened. It didn't just happen. You, something occurred when you triggered or somehow you were brought into that arena to trigger that thing to come into your life. So it's like gossip is like that Ouija board. And you're doing this and you're doing that, and all of a sudden, this, you know, next you know, you might be at work or you might be walking down the street. Then, two days, three days, maybe a month later, and all of a sudden, that thought runs through your mind about what happened. Or somebody could be talking about a situation similar to, and your interpretation of kicks in. And now that situation of, or that gossip, causes you to suffer from the bound blessing disease. But there's only one cure for bound blessing disease. 